Hey guys, how's it going? Got a new vehicle today. Got the Kyosho Mad Van. Just gonna do a quick little unboxing. Nothing too long. There's uh, quite a few unboxings out there already for this, so I'm just doing something quick. I'm just gonna show. This thing looks pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about this truck. I like 10 scale monster truck. It's probably my favorite class of RC. Just because of their size, you can run them in the backyard, you can run them in the front yard, you can take them to small little areas, and they're still really fast. So this one looked like it was pretty awesome. I've seen a couple videos of some guys bashing this Kyosho Mad Van and really putting it through its paces and didn't see where anybody was saying that they broke them. And I was quite surprised, seeing how it's based on like a touring car ch type chassis. So, let's get into it. I'm in a smaller area today, so my unboxing is going to be chopped up a little bit because I don't have the space to do too many flipping on the boxes. So you can see it's the van. It comes in the red color. It's the only one that's available right now. The old one was brown. Looking really nice. I like all the molded pieces. The speed controller is waterproof. It says right here on the box. I'm not sure about the receiver. I know the receiver is exposed. I'll show you that in a minute when we open it up. Um, the servo, I'm guessing, might be waterproof. I don't know. I'll check into that. And you can just see some of the features here on the side of the box. Um, the, it does not come with lights. That's optional. I actually found some on eBay. I've already got them coming. The part number is right here. Um, it does show that it comes with the metal spur gear, metal ring and pinion. I'm guessing metal inside. I'm thinking about doing a little bit of a tear down on this before I run it first to uh, see how everything's built. I just kind of go over the diffs and look at everything. Check the shocks for oil. You can see it's full ball bearing. 2S LiPo only and it's the speed controller will handle 3S but not with the 4,000 kV motor. So if you just change the motor to a 3,300, you can run a 3S system in this, but from what I've seen on some running footage already out there, this thing is pretty fast out of the box with 2S. Okay, let's get it open. All right, we got the box undone. and sliced some of the tape and let's kind of see how they got this thing packaged package pretty nice a little smaller than expected on the tire size but the body's good size good 10 scale monster truck size yeah it comes wrapped up it's got the mirrors the visor so it comes with a sp optional spoiler you can cut out or it's a uh, yeah i guess it's cut out and mount um like we got some shock spacers, servo horns, stickers, and uh, your manual. There's your radio, the Synchro KT31P Plus, 24 gigahertz FHSS, high response. It's pretty big, I kind of like the way it feels. Nice foam grip. Got all your trims that you would need. All right, let's get the cellophane off of here. Get a good look at it. Good looking paint. Stickers are applied really nice. I mean, there's no no bubbles in them at all. I mean, that's pretty nice. Don't see any blemishes anywhere on the stickers? Oh, everything looks good there. They're very, very, very lightweight truck. 2S should be, make this thing fly. I mean, this thing weighs nothing. 
tires feel okay. Probably better for on road. We'll have to see. I'm also curious. Maybe in this video, I might try throwing on some uh, regular monster truck tires from uh, Stampede size and see how they fit. What they look like. Yeah, looks pretty pretty nice. Let's look at the grill. Like I said, I already got the lights ordered, and it comes with um, the yellow. Uh, the clear, the yellow, and then the red for the rear light buckets on that light kit. Let's see what's inside. Let's see what's going on inside the body. How the bumper's held on. Pretty flexible mount. The light buckets. Front and rear. Body fills, eh, it's not, it's not uh, team associated rival or pro four thickness because those bodies are super thick, but it should hold up okay because the vehicle's so light. I mean, this thing weighs nothing. Closer here. On and off switch. There's your standard Hobby Wing rebrand. The brain's 10, 60 amp, says two to three S lipo. Like I said, we'll do it with this 4,000 kV motor. You need to go down to uh, 33, 3,100, somewhere in there. Um, I have a 33, I might try it, but I don't know. So we got some foam blocks for the batteries to fit. Aluminum shaft. how flexible these arms are. Well, the plastics seem really flexible. You can see that. But that's going to make this little thing really durable for bashing. I mean, they flex quite a bit. Let's see how that is for handling. I got a weird rear body mount going on here. Got like multiple spacers to raise it and lower it. Here's the willy bar. One thing that I have seen and heard is no adjustable fronts, so putting an optional body on this might be a little bit of a trick. Um, but maybe not. I don't know. We'll have to dig into that and see if we can run something else on it if we want. Suspension fills okay because it's such a light vehicle but i i think it could probably use a little more dampening we'll we'll mess with that later see the bottom's pretty smooth you got the velcro hanging out the bottom but it does sit in a recessed area so when it's cinched down it's not hanging you know too much below where that's the only thing that snags on rocks and whatever and cuts it up Just little tiny bumpers. You can see again, flex on the arms. That should make it pretty durable. Chassis flex is minimal. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. It should be nice and fun. All right, so I took a brief break here to just check out the electronics. I can't find out where the servo is waterproof. It is 83 ounces of torque, which is probably not bad for something this light at uh, 0.15 seconds. It's not bad, but I cannot see where it's listed as waterproof, so I'm guessing it's not. Also, the receiver is right here, tucked in, not in a receiver box. Also looked it up and I did not find any information about it being waterproof. So even though these two units are waterproof, these two are not. So you could do an upgraded waterproof servo and probably do a balloon on this if you want to waterproof it. I mean, they make some waterproof receiver covers. You could probably balloon this and maybe move it somewhere else if you're worried about it. Yeah, I think I might just take a shock apart and uh, get a good look at it. Um, it 
check the pinion mesh. That's always a good thing to do on a new car anyway. And uh, check what's going on in the diffs and just see if they're oil filled or just grease or if they're sealed, you know, what, what they look like in there. Okay, so it runs steel dog bones. The outdrives out of the diffs are plastic, but they're completely, there's no split in them. So that should make it hold up a little bit better because it doesn't have a split where it can pop open. Same on the axle side. Should be fairly strong. We'll see how that holds up. I'm sure it's common for this chassis, so we'll see. All right, I took the uh, spring retainer off and the springs and spacers and noticed that underneath the spacers and all that, there is an awful lot of oil. Now I will say, if you can get real close, I don't see where it's coming out of the shock cap. It looks like it may be a residual from maybe when they filled it at the factory. Um, I'm thinking maybe it's leaking from this bottom seal here. So that's something you might want to check if you just bought one of these. Maybe just clean them up really good and then just keep an eye on them so you don't get dirt sticking to all the oil. Sounds like it's got a little bit of air but the oil is really, it is quite light. Yeah, it's not completely full. It's got a lot of air in it. But it's nice and clean, which is good. I think I might, uh, um, well, I'm just going to put it back together the way it is and give it its first run before I try doing any suspension messing around just to see how it handles like it is. All right, and I'm messing around with the shocks, tearing one apart and just kind of looking at the oils. I didn't change anything yet. I probably will in the future. But one thing I noticed is this upper screw is really tight. And is what it's doing is sandwiching the whole shock solid to the shock tower. So my suggestion is, is take those top screws and back them off eighth to a quarter of a turn. Just to give them a little bit of wiggle room like I did already so that they're not locked. Because under massive flexing, I mean, it could cause some breakage. It's also going to cause binding right off the get-go because they're not going to be able to move freely. So just back those screws off just like an eighth of a turn just so you barely get a little play and it frees them up quite a bit. All right, I uh, removed six screws off of this. This gives you access to the pinion gear. Um, you can see the metal spur with a slipper. I didn't mention the slipper before. It's probably on the box I didn't notice. That's a nice, there's a slipper adjustment. Um, it probably needs to be broken in a little bit. And then uh, I was checking the pinion mesh, but on this particular car, if nobody has a Kyosho, you wouldn't know. It has preset uh, gears with this. So you whatever tooth you decide to use, uh, just look at the manual and I tell you um, A, B, C, D, GH which one to use for that specific size and this is great for beginners because the uh, pinion gear mesh is pretty much foolproof. Uh, it's just a slotted just pops in like that and it's got perfect pinion mesh. Seems pretty good to me. Yeah I like that. All right and I'm looking at getting the diff out. That was pretty easy. So uh, after you remove the spur gear mount, because it does sit over it, you just remove four screws here, here, pop it up like that, full access to your diff. I mean, probably the easiest diffs you can get to when it comes to 10 scale monster truck. I mean, there's no resistance in these at all. It's nice to see the metal gears. They, I mean, they look at their machined. They don't look like pop metal. I'm sure they're going to hold up pretty good. Okay, well here we got the diff part. Uh, just looking at it. Now these are centered gears. I don't see where there's a seal now. 
there's a plastic insert pressed into that gear. So it might seal um, good enough if you was to use diff oil. And on this side, if you take the cup out, you can see it does have an O-ring. Not a double O-ring like a lot of them, just a single on the outside. So it might hold the fluid. If you're going to put fluid in it, you might expect it to leak, but you can see they just got a blob of grease in there. And of course, I haven't even ran it, so it's not spread around yet. So you could probably run some uh, diff grease in here and just see, you know, see how it goes. Some diff fluid, I should say, not grease. And if you want to try to tune it a little bit, just remember the heavier you go, the more torsion more torque and stuff you put on uh, all the other parts um, so you could start breaking some plastic out drives or something if you go too heavy all right I got it all put back together and uh, just decided to throw a battery in here and test out how everything is so I can give it its first run tomorrow uh, put the batteries in the controller the first thing I want to say is this vehicle is so easy to work on that you should be able to fix any broken part on this thing and I would guess about 15 minutes at the most. It is so easy. I mean, this would be recommended for any beginner. I mean, lots of flexible parts, but I mean, the ease of working on this is crazy. I mean, you can have the whole diff out in uh, 60 seconds with the screws. I mean, changing the pinion gear is easy. I mean, the hardest thing probably on this thing to deal with is bleed the shocks if you ever change the fluid. And, but I mean, this thing's easy to work on. Very simple, low profile chassis, you know, so it's got all the center, but like the high CG, like the Stampede, the Rival, they're very hard to get to the diffs. I mean, they're, you know, they take an hour to do all that stuff. The Rival's front end is, is a mess. This thing would be a joy to work on compared. Um, anyway, let's fire it up and see if we got all the trims correct. Turn on the controller. It even has a low battery if this is flashing. Um, it's not flashing, brand new batteries. Uh, let's ounces of torque on the servo let's put it on the table and see how it oh yeah turns really easy on dirt this thing should be awesome not a bad servo at all looks like the end points I need to probably turn the dual right down see how much extra there is there in both directions. Got a six on the uh, steering dual rate. Get your end point so you don't burn your servo up pretty fast. Seems to have a really mild break. Reverse. All right, we're going to check out some tires here, but one thing I wanted to notice just taking the wheel off. So here's the wheel hex, 12 millimeter. Should be able to fit standard tires. We'll check in a second. But it has its own little keyed pattern that sits on the axle. Um, but note to note, inside the axle it is metal. So there's a nut insert even there, even though this part is plastic. So that's nice. Um, I also noticed in their hop-up parts, they do make metal CVAs for this. So if anybody's interested in doing metal axles so this whole parts metal all the way through I just got to get this unit back on here 
All right, so we uh, put some trenchers on here with the stampede offset wheels just to see what would fit on here. And clearance wise, they don't rub. I mean, they clear the chassis. Um, you can see the size difference here. The bigger, the biggest size difference is this direction. And there's quite a big a size difference. And I'm going to say, no, they don't clear the body. So I would say 10 scale monster truck tires are out. Um, unless you're gonna trim your body out to a nothing. All right, guys, there's my uh, unboxing on the Kyosho Mad Van VE brushless one. Looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, did a brief tear down for you, tire comparison, just a couple small things that people are probably wanting to know. I was wondering myself about it. Um, I think this truck is going to be super easy for every, anybody and everybody to work on. Um, probably the easiest 10 scale monster truck to work on a, there is out there, I would say. Not everything else is, this thing is easy. The only problem with this truck could be parts. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody starts putting out there what's breaking. If I start having breakages, I'll let anybody know. Start gobbling up the parts that you can, because we know Kyosho has had parts issues here and there. And, uh, I picked this up from OMG RC. Um, I got it really super fast. Um, I like Joe over there at OMG. He's probably the fourth or fifth vehicle I've got from him. And always right on it, gets everything out right away. And that's it on the video. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, comment below. Thank you.